Hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Banks. I'm an Associate Professor in Neurosciences and Psychiatry. I'm a neuropsychologist and also the Director of our Neuropsychology Program in the Center for Brain Health and Memory Disorders at UCSD. Um, today I'm going to be explaining a bit about um, PET scans and why they're important in AD research and what's involved. Positron emission tomography, or PET, is an imaging technology that uses dyes or tracers with small amounts of radioactivity to tag various chemicals in your brain. This allows us to see them on a computer during a scan. It's used for a wide range of purposes. Sometimes it's used to tag the use of energy in your brain, which can allow us to see which parts are busier and which parts are less active. Much of the research at the ADRC and our partner studies involves really innovative tech, new technology, which allows us to tag the bad proteins that cause Alzheimer's disease. Until quite recently, less than 20 years ago, we needed to wait until an autopsy to know if someone had Alzheimer's pathology in their brain. This is really important as Alzheimer's is difficult to accurately diagnose during life, and even the world's experts don't get it right all the time. If we have patients who do not have the disease in our studies of Alzheimer's, we might miss important information. In addition, there's a long period of time early in the Alzheimer's process where the two proteins which are thought to combine to cause Alzheimer's accumulate without causing symptoms yet. These proteins are beta amyloid, which creates plaques throughout the brain, and pathological tau, which creates tangles, interrupting the work of brain cells starting in the memory centers of the brain. In 2002, scientists developed dyes to inject into a person's arm, which would tag the beta amyloid protein in the brain during a PET scan. This allowed us to see who had this protein with minimal harm and certainly earlier in the process than waiting for an autopsy. This was hugely exciting for scientists as we would know with some certainty who had Alzheimer's or who was likely to develop it in the future. Many of us feel that early intervention holds the best promise for developing treatments in Alzheimer's. So finding ways to detect very early AD changes is really important. More recently, researchers have developed dyes to tag tau pathology in the brain. This is particularly important as soon after tau starts depositing in the brain, these areas, um, the areas involved stop working properly leading to cognitive problems like memory loss and word finding difficulties. If you agree to a PET study as part of a research study, you'll be invited to come to one of our PET centers. Here, technologists will prepare you, starting with seating you comfortably in a quiet room and injecting you with the dye. You'll then be asked to sit quietly for a while until your blood has had a chance to get the dye to your brain. Then there will be a scan for a few minutes and then you're done. The PET scanner has quite a wide hole and the bed will automatically move you into the right place. The technologist will be on hand to make sure that you're comfortable and answer any questions. PET involves a small amount of radioactivity. Usually our consent forms will explain exactly how much radiation a particular study involves in relation to flights, as flying is another way that we expose ourselves to radiation, usually without thinking about it and without any consequence. There are various layers of protection to make sure that you don't get too much exposure. Having too many PET scans in a year is discouraged. And if you recently had cancer and had PET scans as part of that or radiation treatment, you may not be eligible for our studies so that we can avoid exposing you to too much radiation. As a PET researcher, I am quite biased, but I think that PET scans are enormously important for our research. In my research, I used PET to study why women tend to have more of the tau pathology in their brains than men, and how activities like exercise, eating the right diet, and getting good quality sleep might impact this. I am truly grateful to the participants in our studies who go through the hassle of coming to the appointments and getting the injections in our scans, but I know that together we can make great strides towards finding ways to reduce or delay the risk of dementia. A big thank you to all of you who, who participate in our studies.